It's time for another high yield free USMLE practice question. Let's dive right into today's video question bank series. A peripheral blood smear is taken and reveals the following pathologic cell with uniformly small projections. And you can see this image taken right here. Which of the following associated conditions might you expect to find in the patient from which this sample was taken? A, lead poisoning, B, myelofibrosis, C, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency, D, megaloblastic anemia, or E, end-stage renal disease. If you'd like some time to think about this question, please pause the video now. And I'm going to go ahead and give you the answer. The correct answer to this practice question is choice E, end-stage renal disease. The reason that this is the correct answer is because the cell shown in the image is an echinocyte. Echinocytes are associated with a few things. One, end-stage renal disease, two, states of liver disease, and three, pyruvate kinase deficiency. Now, if you were taking this question and you weren't sure what that cell was, that it was an echinocyte, or that you knew it was an echinocyte, but you were not sure what echinocytes were associated with, how could you have worked through this question to eliminate incorrect answer choices and narrow down the correct, the possible correct choices to improve your odds of getting this question correct. When we look at the answer choices, A, B, C, D, and obviously E are all associated with different types of pathologic red blood cells. And so if you know some of them, you could have eliminated incorrect choices. So in this question, the echinocyte, the image is given to you, but it's also described to you as highlighted there in orange. It is a pathologic red blood cell with uniform small projections. Let's work through the other possible answer choices, A through D, and talk about what they are associated with to see if you could have eliminated incorrect choices. So lead poisoning, choice A, you would see what's known as basophilic stippling, and that's shown in the image in the bottom right-hand corner of the slide. That image is distinctly different from the image that you were given as well as the description that you were given, because after all, basophilic stippling does not have uniformly small projections. And so because of that, if you know that lead poisoning is associated with basophilic stippling, while you might not know that I'm giving you an echinocyte in the image, in the vignette, you certainly know that that's not basophilic stippling. And so you could have eliminated choice A and then narrowed your choices down to having a 25% chance of merely guessing the correct answer. Choice B, myelofibrosis, is associated with a dacrocyte, and dacrocytes are occasionally called teardrop cells. And what you see here is the type of pathologic red blood cell shown on the bottom right-hand corner of the slide. It kind of, to some extent, looks like the formation of a teardrop, hence the name teardrop cell. But dacrocytes are associated with myelofibrosis, and to a larger extent, they're associated with different forms of bone marrow infiltration. And so again, while you may not know that I gave you an echinocyte, you may not know that choice E was the correct answer. Perhaps you knew that myelofibrosis or other states of bone marrow infiltration were associated with the, the cells that look like little teardrops, i.e. dacrocytes. And had you known that, you could have eliminated choice B. Choice C, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency, is associated with a degmacyte. Now, degmacytes are sometimes called bite cells, and I think that's probably what medical students most often refer to them as because they quite literally, as you see in the image in the bottom right-hand corner of the slide, look like somebody took a bite right out of a red blood cell. And so if you see a degmacyte, if you see that, that bite cell, you want to associate that with G6PD deficiency. That's an incredibly high yield association that gets tested quite often. So again, perhaps you were taking this question, you didn't know that I gave you an echinocyte, but you knew for sure, because most medical students do, that G6PD deficiencies are associated with bite cells. You could have been taking this question and been like, yeah, I don't know what the answer is, but I know it's not C. Because if it was C, I would see the bite cell. Choice D, megaloblastic anemia, that is associated with a macro ovalocyte. So macro ovalocytes are going to be associated with megaloblastic anemia. And as you see in the image, you see macro for large. It kind of looks like that sort of enlarged cell. And you, of course, also want to associate megaloblastic anemia uh, with hypersegmented PMNs. So, but again, we're not seeing that here. And so if you knew that association, which is a, a, um, a more commonly tested and a more commonly known fact than an echinocyte, 
you could have eliminated choice D. And so the purpose of this question is not only to teach you about the pathologic red blood cells, but obviously to constantly be reinforcing the idea that if you don't know the correct answer, that doesn't mean that you cannot eliminate the incorrect answers based on what you already know and what you've already studied. Before I conclude this video, since we're talking about pathologic red blood cells, I want to point out a really high yield uh, distinction between echinocytes and acanthocytes because I gave you an echinocyte in the vignette, but people oftentimes confuse the echinocyte with the acanthocyte. And so again, echinocytes were the, the were given to you in this vignette. They have they are associated with end stage renal disease different states of liver disease, and pyruvate kinase deficiencies. Again, the big thing with an echinocyte is that you're going to see those uniform small projections. An acanthocyte, also known sometimes as a spur cell, is also associated with liver disease, uh, specifically a beta lipoproteinemia, where you have cholesterol dysregulation. And the way that you would differentiate these two is that the echinocyte, those little projections are small, and they tend to be uniform. Whereas in the acanthocyte, they're much more irregular and larger or more spiny or kind of like sharper looking. And if you look at these images, I think you can appreciate that the acanthocyte, very sharp, very irregular, very spiny, the echinocyte much more uniform and much smaller. Okay, so be able to differentiate these two because they're two completely different pathologic red blood cells. And the only thing that they have in common is that they have projections and that they're associated with liver disease. But in order to separate, separate the two, you would obviously need to be able to recognize them under a microscope. So that does it for this practice question. Hope this was helpful.